Hello, and welcome to this service for the third Sunday after Trinity. Today we'll be thinking about serving God and other people as we begin to come out of lockdown. For the first time, we're filming in church, and we hope that we can soon gather here for worship. You'll need, of course, your, your service readings and newsletter, and you can find these on the website or on the email that I've sent you. Select the playlist or click on the link to get the full service. So, a moment of quiet before we begin. And so we meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And so we make our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come to our great God in the knowledge that we fall so far short of his goodness. And in penitence and faith, we ask him to prepare us for his service. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Now you'll need your reading sheet for the collect and the readings. First, the collect. Almighty God, you've broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now to our readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. The prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, 
since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we will sing, Just As I Am.
reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. If you're looking for an item to buy, the right person to do a job, or a good place to go on holiday, it's good to have someone else's recommendation. Personal recommendation is best, of course, if you know someone who's used this electrician or read that book. Otherwise, reviews can be a good way forward. You can look on the book's cover, or maybe look up Trustpilot or TripAdvisor. Five stars, and hopefully you've completed your quest. One star, well, maybe look elsewhere. Today's readings are about being good representatives for our faith. Jeremiah tells of the true prophet who is proved as God's messenger when what they prophesy comes true, a five-star prophet. Paul tells the Christians at Rome to be ruled by God's grace, not by sin. Then they'll be able to accept Christ's free gift of eternal life with a clear conscience, a five-star Christian. Jesus says, a true disciple's integrity will lead them to discern the truth of God, of their fellow believers' talents and goodness, and of the needs of the poorest sisters and brothers. A five-star disciple. So, what would your rating be? How would a review of your life go? Well, okay badly. Fortunately, whatever your own estimate, our Heavenly Father sees us through the prism of his Son's cross with only beautiful colours coming through. We're uniquely loved and forgiven. But as Paul explored in the second reading, we're not to take God's love for granted. We must respond to his five-star service with our five-star service in our prayer, worship, faithfulness, support of our fellow Christians, and care of those in need. As we tentatively emerge from lockdown, many have commented about our need for a new, thoughtful, more caring world. We Christians can be in the vanguard with the rationale and example for this, telling the world of our experience of God's amazing love for all shown in his Son, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. To build a five-star world, all of us need to be five-star Christians as five-star witnesses to our five-star God. And now, if you're using the playlist, you can join in with and sing along with I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. 